Hi, hi everyone, this is Eric with Lobogob Services, and today's video is on how to make a Python data entry form. You can find this, the link to the code, down there in the description box below. So here's a quick example of how, it, how it's going to work together. <clears throat> what you see on your, on your screen is a, is a form. We have a form up here, and we have a list of data down here. And if you look back to some of my other videos, on well, the video prior to this one, I think, uh, you'll see that this, we created a MySQL database, and we are listing providers from a table in that database called TBL Providers. And this table is a list of providers from that table. And actually, I'm recreating a, a, a application I built in PHP in Python just to see uh, some concepts and see if we can add some performance speed. And plus, uh, Python is usable um, on your desktop as well as on the website. So... Um, not claiming to be a, a Python expert in a part, at least some, uh, some other people are probably going to say, you can do it this way too, but good. But uh, I am going to show you that how, I, how it's according to me and how I would go about doing it. So here we're having a data entry form. Right here we have not set, whenever we initialize the form, Whenever we go to the, the URL initialize the form, these values are not set. Okay, the values F name and city are not set. So we're going to put the not set in the box because that's the value of the box. And then if I type in uh, Judy from uh, Maryland. Just uh, choose an arbitrary name here, and then submit. I'm getting Judy from Maryland here. It's reading reading the values and storing them in here, of course. And the plan in the next video is to insert these values into the database, so they'll show up here in the table in this grid below. So. We're not, in this video, we're not adding them to the database, but it's fairly simple to add them to the database table, but we're not. So I'm going to show you the code, how to do this. So here is the code behind this. Really interesting. <clears throat> First, and all of this comes from a, a Python page, and we're just spitting out, uh, just print out some HTML values. So really, really neat. Here we have our Python interpreter. And of course, you can get the code down there in the uh, description box below. Get the code down there, description box below. Okay. Now, we have a .py file here. So a .py file, Python, HostGator, uh, it's the easiest way to, easiest way to use Python on your site, um, because otherwise you have to go through a bunch of hoops, and um, anyway, I found that HostGator is the easiest way to do it, and so I recommend to use them. Here's my Python interpreter, Linux. Uh, the Apache server has a Python has Python installed, and here's my, that's my interpreter. Um, everything on my page is going to be printed out, and I'm going to print out everything to the page. So I need to make sure that I have uh, content type, text, HTML on the top of my screen, so that everything on my page is printed out. Otherwise, I have to use this every time I use the print command and I really don't want to do that I want a one-size-fits-all approach I want a universal approach so I'm gonna just print everything on the on the top of the screen here 
um, I'm printing out the the variables for the initial the initial uh, tags for my uh, for my HTML page. Print HTML, print head. So I have my head. I have my title. I have my now I have my body here. So these are the the skeleton for the for the thing. I'm going to import my modules. Well, if you looked in the previous video, everything from the MySQL database, these are items that, these are modules, class modules that are already, ha that Python already has. And so I'm just going to import the qualities, import them so I could use them. So I'm importing uh, the, the MySQL uh, uh, methods and procedures, yeah, the methods from, from MySQL so I could use them. I'm importing this as a new one, import OS, and it has a lot of a lot of features to it. OS is really really cool. We can the operating system. Um, I'm also importing my so anything I can use my form variables. Import the module for CGI handling. CGI is an older technology, but it's gonna work. It's gonna work with us. We're working in this situation right here. So, okay, I have all these, I've defined all these procedures, but let's go back to, let's go to where it starts. Way down here. Okay. Down here, start. Init. So, I'm, the, any, uh, now Python is a, it goes by its indention, and rather than brackets, so it's it's a very um, very interesting very interesting language, kind of different than other approaches. So that you like if you use uh, if you use well, it's different totally than BBA. Uh, if you use let's say uh, JavaScript or Java or C or uh, PHP. Uh, you have the brackets, everything closed by the brackets functions, closed by uh, these brackets, the, uh, the functions, you know, procedures, all this good stuff. If, if, if statements, switch case statements, so they're all closed by brackets. Well, a, a Python uh, has it all indented, so we have indentions. So here, we're going to start with the, so the indention is way over here on the left side. So the indention is in it. Again, um, you don't have to worry about all this stuff here at the bottom. Because, blah, blah, blah. Those are, that's good information for, for me to know. And at the bottom of, at the end of my, Python script. I have these. I have my closing tags. So that's so good. So anyway, back to Python. So it, within it, I have all the Python code. So I have I have init, and init brings me what is init. I define it with a def def init, and then I have my uh, my indention, and then OS environment. So I want to get. I want to query the string. What happens when I query the string? So the query string uh, is whenever I click on these little buttons right here, these things. You notice that they're they're all hyperlinks. Well, if you look down here at the bottom of your screen, the bottom left corner of your screen, you're going to see where um, ID equals four. ID equals three, ID equals two. So if I click this two, I'm going to show two up here. Here are my query parameters, two. And I'm going to the wrong page, so anyway, it's okay. I'm posting to the, to the wrong page, but I'll be right in the next video. I thought I was right already, but it's not. So, anyway. So, my query string, ID equals 2, ID equals 3. 
okay and now I'm going that's I'm storing that in my variable params oh it's environment get query string no it's not me using the OS module here that I imported the method environment get I'm getting everything on the query string I'm finding where the equal sign is and then I'm using this find if there is an equal sign in the query param use int to convert the variable to see it we in order because everything comes in as text and we have to we have to convert it to a well anything in the query params is a is a text value so we're going to convert it to an integer value so we do that by using the int this little conversion and int and then params what is params the query string this is kind of neat with the python we have params okay inside the text find find the equal sign and then we just store it in the variable int equals if int equals if it's greater than if it does have an equal sign if it's greater than uh if it's greater than one the record already exists so i'm saying okay if it's greater than one then i clicked on one of those hyperlinks if there's no query parameter there's no equal sign i started from the beginning so if this that's good for my next videos which we're going to talk about which come out about the other parts of crud the uh i think r update and update delete we yeah, we're gonna edit read update delete here we're part of c create create the new record so here we're just showing the showing the values arg parameter three create the new record get the field values we want to get the field values here are part of the the else the else part of uh if int equals because there's nothing in there there's no uh there's no equals so we're going to create the new record and now we're going to get the field values so we're using the cgi cgi module the field storage property and we're storing it in for all the field values are stored in form okay cool if form get value equals f name if it's if the if we if we we're using the post so we we can read the values from the form this is a more secure way of doing this because people can't read the the if you read if you passing that very if you passing your variables in the url people can keep you people can read them so we're posting posting the form and down here we have post we're posting the form so that means we can we can read the values so we're reading the form value so we're reading the form value the f name um, and this happens to be the f name field Let's see where we have that in here so f name name f name so in the name f name so we're getting the value f name uh if not it's not set if it has no value that's what we saw when we first opened up the form it had no value it had not set in there and the same thing we're doing with city get city okay get the values from the fields blah, blah blah great and then we're going to insert the values in the table and another in the next next video and with the new provider we're spitting them out to the screen print and we're printing the form providers add form values and provider Form values dot py uh -huh. 
and then <clears throat> we're putting the value of it the value of it equal to value and the city and here's our submit button okay and then we're calling this procedure show table so after we have the form then we're going to show the form first and then we're going to show the grid at the bottom show table okay now that we did this go down here to show table fun show table uh yeah function or the procedure it doesn't really return well, it kind of returns the value but they're all called they're all the same so functions are procedures so we call this procedure so here we have our connection to the database and the cursor we're making the cursor and then we're this is kind of like the same thing we saw in the other video we saw everything being stored in the cursor and being spit out to the being spit out to the, the screen and actually there's here's our problem right here providers that's where it was uh, this is right All right. Okay, folks. So, and then we're printing the virus out to the screen. And then we need to convert the index to a screen because otherwise you'll have just a blank screen. You'll wonder, what in the world's wrong with this? I don't know. Well, okay. If you're going to put a integer value, if you want to print out the value of an integer value, you need to convert it to a string. Uh, Python will not allow you. They're very, it's very strict, and so you're gonna have to convert these things. If you print them out, they're gonna have to be. Uh, it's not as flexible as VBA, I would say, but but you, I mean, you have power. You have power with Python. Um, you are taking your your variable ID and then converting it to a string variable. And then we're closing the connection down here at the bottom. Okay, so now I'm going to go back here. I want to print. I want to show you one more thing before we end this video. Uh, Python add. Okay, now I transfer my file up using FileZilla, and go back to here again. Okay, I'm gonna refresh my page. Now these should these should work. Yeah, that's right. So, so select all from. Now, now we now we're cooking forward. So now we can do the crud, the other parts of the crud, because we are going to the right page. Before we go into the straight to the providers page, but I didn't change that part. Anyway, it's okay. And three. Okay, now we're now we're set up to do the other thing. And remember that up here. We have a we're test for the equal sign to see if a parameter was sent. So if I don't have if I don't have anything up here, if I don't have this equal sign, if I find it, it all bank of things up certain from the beginning and it shows me a form. So if you do have any questions, leave them down there in the comments below. You can get the code at Python and HTML examples, or click down there in the comments below. Uh, thanks for your attention, and stay tuned to the next videos because we're going to continue on our application here. So, thanks for watching. If you got value from it, make sure you click the like button. Bye bye.